Seeing that it's 7 o'clock this evening, I'd like to call to order the uh, meeting of the Board of Selectmen for the Town of Situate. And in particular, I ask people who are here, if you have a cell phone, please turn it off. If you have a hat on, would you please remove it since we are indoors? Um, looking at the call of the order, I now go to the acceptance of the agenda so and moved. ask for a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Uh, moving on uh, to walk-in period. Are there any walk-ins here tonight? Okay. Seeing no walk-ins, then I'd like to move on to the next uh, item on the agenda, and that's number three. It's a vote or designation of a unique property for 44 Jericho Road. I will abstain from this discussion. So, Mr. Um, Chairman, uh, Town Council Jim Toomey is coming in for this item, so if we could wait until he arrives. Sure. Then why don't we postpone this until Town Council is here. So moving right along, we'll move on to item number four. Uh, which happens to be the presentation of the 4th of July. And I see uh, Mr. Conway, would you please come on up to the table and give us do so. a little feedback on that? Gary. Also, Gary, Gary, if you could also come up, please. Yeah. Hi, uh, Gary. Just um, if you could just identify yourselves, gentlemen, for the audience. Yeah, my name is Jack Conway, and I'm a member of the American Legion in Situate that's post 144. And uh, I'm very pleased to be here, and I thank uh, Chairman John and former Chairman Joe for inviting us. And my, uh, to the right is uh, Mr. Gary Callow, who is well known in this uh, community. Gary is our veterans officer, and uh, he's my right hand, and, and I'm, I'm his left hand, I guess. We, we're working together on this project. <coughs> our commanding officer is, uh, 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 he, he's, he's not to be, you know, uh, Ed Cavell will not be able to with us. He's running the, the American Legion meeting down at the KSC Hall right now. It's okay. Uh, my my uh, pleasure tonight is to tell you just a little bit about the plan for the July meeting, our, our uh, event, which will be held on the town green at 12 noon on July 4th. Uh, this is the 34th. The 234th, excuse me, the 234th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence, which was signed in Philadelphia, and among the signatories were John Hancock and uh, our own John Adams. Uh, that was the document, of course, that said that determined our political future for, for then and hopefully for all time. We broke away from the British and we formed our own union. We formed our country. Uh, it's, a, it's an important thing, and the American Legion felt it had been a little bit overlooked over the, over the years, and it got down to shooting off a few fireworks and things like that, but the American Legion thought that it's about time for a, a, a serious, political, patriotic, educational celebration be held on the town green. So we came to the Board of Selectmen and asked their permission to go ahead and do it, and Joe was chairman then and I said, go ahead and do the best you can, and we'll help out the best we can. Now we finally put, what started off as a very small idea. We put it together, put it together and the idea of like Topsy has grown. Uh, it's, uh, I'm gonna ask Gary Carlo to, uh, while I'm talking, to distribute a copy of our proposed program for the event. And uh, like all programs, there may be some slight changes uh, over time, over time, but, uh, if you'll give me a copy of that too, Gary, you've got uh, Thanks, Gary. it through. <clears throat> and, uh, but we, uh, we think we've uh, got it pretty well straightened out, and uh, I'd like to run through it with you very, very quickly. In the, uh, it was amazing that through a happy circumstance, we were able to secure the uh, speaking uh, uh, cooperation of General, a four-star general. Uh, general Casey. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Who is the uh, uh, George K George Casey Jr. God bless. George Casey Jr.'s father was a major general, and uh, he he ended his life in the Vietnam War when his, the helicopter he was in was shot down. George Casey Jr. has now risen up through the ranks, having. Uh, commanded everything from a platoon up to an army. 
He was the uh, he was the army representing the combined Allied forces and the combined United States United Nations forces in Iraq for a period of almost three years. He succeeded General Sanchez, and he had and uh, then he was moved on along the line and was uh, was made the chief general of the United States Army. The, uh, it's a pretty good job for a man who used to summer in situate and still does and knows our town very well as, as that swims on our beaches that it was a part of the, the life of this town. Uh, he's, a, he's a graduate of Boston, uh, Boston College High School. He's a graduate of Georgetown. He took his doctorate at Denver University and he went on to amass a great, uh, a great career in the United States Army. He will be a featured speaker. He came to us not anything that Gary or I did or, or Joe did. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, Ed Cavell did. He came because one of the young ladies in town was at a meeting, and she said, we were looking for a speaker, and believe this or not, she sat there, she said, I know someone, and he's very important, I think. <laughs> Ed Cavell says, who is he? She said, well, his name is Georgie Casey, and he's a general of the Army. And Ed looked up. He said, you don't mean General George Casey, the Chief of Staff of the United States Army? She said, yeah, that's him. So how do we get him? So she sat down, she wrote him a letter. This is indeed is America. She's his neighbor. She, she, she wrote him a letter. He answered the letter. She said, she said, the letter was to Judy Mulcahy. He said, Judy, I'd be delighted to come. We were old family friends for many, many years, and I think that's a little something I owe the town to situate. I'm very pleased to be with you. But now, when you've got somebody hitting fourth in your, in your, uh, in your lineup, like General Casey, you, do, you try your best to build a, uh, build a team around him. Uh, Ed Cavell went to the um, National Guard, and we talked to General uh, Jim Sellers. Uh, who's commander of all the armed forces for the Massachusetts National Guard. And he said, that's great. I'd like to be there myself. I'd like to bring my band. So he's got to bring the, bring the band, the full band. That's the MNG band, Mr. Uh, Conway? The, yes, sir. All right. Uh, the uh, National, Massachusetts National Massachusetts Guard. Guard. Gotcha. So that's uh, the music. So they will provide the music for this of great event. And you've got the, introductory. Father Bradley of the Foyer of Charity will begin the event with, uh, 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 with a prayer and a set a... Um, and a few comments about the importance of it. And then we've got something awfully nice going to happen. We brought in some kids uh, of the Situate High School, and uh, they're going to help us. Uh, Gary has been uh, working with Adam Crowley. Adam Crowley is going to do the uh, uh, Pledges of the Flag. He was an oratorical winner for the Situate High School. Uh, uh, Catherine Hodgkins is going to sing the national anthem. And uh, she has done it before, and she's got a gorgeous voice, and with the high school as well. And to, to finish up with the high school side, uh, we've got uh, uh, we got uh, we got a, one other youngster in here, and I love all these kids. Samantha. Must be Samantha Lawyer. For yeah, the it's a, of Samantha Lawyer. Okay. Samantha Lawyer's mother is a good friend of ours, and her daughter has got great, great talent, and she is actually going to recite. The Pledge of Allegiance, uh, the, 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 the Declaration of Independence, yeah. and this is this is a, a, a wrinkle that a lot of people don't know about. One of the girls found in the town archives a copy of the Declaration of Independence, written and pronounced and read before the town offices, not July 4th, 1776, but one year ahead. It happened here in Situan. Situan wrote their own, in, and they sent that on to the uh, establishment of war in uh, Philadelphia and says, this is what we think, and we think you should step forward. And using that, among other uh, urging, urging they, uh, they did move ahead and, and sign the document. Uh, there's a possibility that General Joe Carter, if he's got a helicopter not on station, may, may send a helicopter over. Uh, as, a, as a gesture for the general. I don't know whether that's going to happen or not, but we'll, we'll, uh, he said if he's got one available, he, w he will uh, consider doing it. Uh, we got a color guard from the, uh, uh, Bill Battles, the president of the uh, Sons of the American Revolution. 
has got a color guard down in Plymouth and he's got with some situate people are in it and he's got to bring the color guard up and they're going to do a little fast color guard step and some military marching and take the colors up to the flagpole. Uh, the, uh, Peter Mahegan, who's well known for his conversations on the radio and on television, he's got a great voice, a situate resident, he was, he's going to recite the, uh, the actual declaration. The declaration is a long, long document. We're, go we're not going to do the whole document. Part A of the document is the salutation and the theory and, and the philosophy. Part, part B is a long, long charge of why the British uh, should leave our chores and go back to Britain and to uh, the home of George III. And the fourth is the actual declaration. So to save on time, we're going to eliminate the long, long charges to do a part one and part three, and he'll do a great job with it, I, I'm sure. Uh, General, General Casey will then make his oration. I heard General Casey speak at Boston College High School at the graduation three days ago, and we got a winner. This guy's a real on, a down to earth, uh, sincere, dedicated Army officer. We're proud, we should be proud to have him. Uh, I've been honored by, uh, by our um, commander, Ed Cavell, and asked to introduce General Casey. Uh, Bill Battles then will do the, um, the uh, walk, uh, will give a presentation, and uh, Gary will uh, uh, introduce him. He'll give a presentation to General Casey on behalf of the Sons of the American Revolution, and, the, and uh, which will be kind of an impressive thing. Then Joe Kelly, whose son Michael uh, gave his life for, the, for our nation and the town to situate, uh, and has had the bridge down leading out of Marshfield, named, named in his honor. Uh, Joe, will, uh, Joe will speak briefly, but he will honor all the parents in, in this town who have given up their sons, either who got killed over in Iraq or Iran, um, or are sitting uh, in, in that theater. And then uh, Chaplain uh, Eleanor Grossman, who used to be a speed skating champion in, in New England, back when I was a newspaper man and come and watched her at the Boston Garden, I, I know her well. She's gonna come and uh, do the final benediction. She's the chaplain for the Legion and just a fine person. And then the band will, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some wrap up re, uh, remarks uh, on why we're doing this and a little bit about John Adams. And uh, it, it won't be a long program, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we started, it'll be, we'll have it wrapped up within an hour and 30 minutes. And then after that, uh, uh, there'll be a, a reception for General Casey up at the uh, uh, new GAR Hall on Country Way. Uh, the, uh, we, uh, S Scott Brown said that if he was available that day, he would like to come, our uh, Senator. He thinks it's a great idea. He, he would like to get to know Casey a little bit better. And he said he will, Jim Cantwell definitely will be here. Um, Bob Hedlund is definitely going to make it. General Sullivan will make it, um, and, uh, and and we'll have a few other people uh, on the stage. It's going to be a well orchestrated show, and the, the star probably is is uh, Steve Litchfield, uh, whose father just passed away. Steve was a uh, uh, friend of Litchfield was on this committee, and Steve has taken over the tough job of being director of all the activities that go behind to make a thing like this work. He's got the stage, and he's got the public address system, and he's got a backup system, and, and he's got the chairs, and he's got the designations for where the general goes and everything else. It's been a big job. We've had a whole bunch of meetings, and they were well attended, and I must say this, the town has got a great veterans agent. He has a Mr. Beatty. We get together a couple of times a week, and Gary is, uh, is a credit to this town and to this committee, and I thank you very much for the time. Mr. Thank, thank you thank very you, much. Pat. Just want to say. We expect to see you all up there. Just want to see you sitting on the stage. <laughs> we absolutely agree with you with Mr. Carlo. He does an excellent job, but, you know, in, in addition, you've done a phenomenal job trying to put this together, being active, and trying to get all the board members to do it. So we commend you all for doing it, and thank you. I look forward to being there. I'm sure most of the members will try to be there. If they're not, this is a great event, and uh, we're all happy for you. So we look forward to it. Now, on behalf of the major, I want to be thank you for the time. Before you go, though, I just wanted to ask if any of the other board members had any questions. I, I I'm great, great, great job. Rain or shine? What's that, Rain, rain, rain or, or shine, shine, right? It goes yes. to the state. Exactly. It is rain or shine. But in the event of rain, Freddie, uh, uh, Steve Litchfield has arranged for us to use the high school. Okay. okay. And, and uh, he's, he's got it all set up with the proper authorities.
and then we'll hold the crowd, and we will have, and we will uh, have prior announcement that in the event that we had to move it, the radio station will uh, work along with us, and, and we'll get the word out. Good. So okay. just just to reiterate, it's on the fourth of July, and it's at twelve o'clock. Sunday, the fourth of July at twelve noon. Twelve o'clock at the Common. Right. Right. And don't get it confused with the official holiday, which is on Monday. We decided to have it on the 4th of July. Makes and sense. we went to Father Bradley who said, make sure it's after the religious services are over. We said, okay. That's a good idea. So thanks very much for having us. Thank, Thank you, you Mr. Thanks. Conway. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. <coughs> Moving on. Um, how about uh, number five? It's, this is a vote permission or the placement of a memorial benches at Gates Intermediate School. And if Linda you could, Ferguson. Ms. Ferguson, come on up and have a seat. Obviously, we've got some background information, but would you briefly just briefly uh, describe to us what you'd like and what you're envisioning and sure. what the school is envisioning? Um, I'm uh, the co-president of the Gates PTO, and uh, the PTO um, would like to request uh, permission to place um, some benches and a plaque uh, at Gates in honor of uh, Principal Dick Blake, Richard Blake, um, who uh, passed away about a month ago. Um, the, uh, since we made the announcement that we were going to do the collection, we, we've had a lot of people come out, support it. They're very excited about it, um, and uh, and we. we gotten some money and so our hope is to do at least four benches and a plaque. Um, uh, the proposed location is um, if you look at Gates School to the left there's kind of like a little cove or whatever. There's already a tree there for I believe a Mr. Verseckis and so we thought if we put the benches kind of over there um, it would be a place for the kids to maybe gather or staff or whatever and maybe have an outdoor class um, something that obviously was near and dear to Principal Blake's heart his uh, his true calling was teaching and he loved those kids and we just want to make sure that that, um, that that's remembered and it's a nice place for the kids to go the the plaque um, would have um, uh, Words by Ralph Waldo Emerson uh, that um, his children and his family attribute to the way he lived his life and his philosophy, um, and it's the um, the poem "What Is Success." Do you want me to read it? Do I have to read What's it? it? Do you have to read it? No, yeah. you don't have to. No. <laughs> um, you can if you. Anyway, like, it's no. about what is success. It's just it's to laugh often and much, and you know it's it's a really great saying, and it really was. His, his true spirit and um, and we just want to you know have a little place I understand there's a memorial po policy in place and I do support that um, I just think that this and that's why we want the what is success there so it is more of a kind of a spiritual place but also you know to have kids contemplate uh, what success is and and um, in in the way that Dick wanted them to think about it so um. Any questions? No. no. Or, okay. um, just, Linda, is it granite benches? I'm not going to do granite benches. <laughs> I don't think we're going to have the money to do granite benches. And I kind of want something a little more comfortable for the kids if they were to have a class out there or something like that. It, it, the intention is to be um, benches that are maintenance-free, though, so the town would not incur any cost because of this um, you know, uh, area. If I do if we do get enough money for granted, I'm happy to try that. Um, but I do want it to be a comfortable place um, and a place that maybe, you know, in time things could be added to it and, you know. So what, what are they wooden? Are they um, no, we're looking at recycled plastic benches, which are maintenance free, but they look like wood. I don't know if that, they actually kind of look like the benches up in North Situate. They look like they have the black frame, but they're this H, I don't know, some three-letter term um, that is maintenance-free. It doesn't chip. It doesn't peel. Yeah. Um, is and the then plaque the plaque going in the ground? Or the is plaque it is going to go in the ground with, um, I believe the way we're going to do it is with two, one or two posts. The plaque's kind of big. Um, it's going to be 12 by 15. So it's not going on the bench. It's going to be 
going to be like a little table position sort of there so that the benches are kind of maybe you know one here one here one here one here maybe the plaque here with some shrubbery or something or whatever so that they can read it and look at it um, it's a 12 by 15 plaque because of the words it's a big plaque and that's going to be made out of um, it's cast either cast brass or cast aluminum whichever um, there it's also maintenance free and will last a lifetime right. I think it's great I mean you know I know we all missed miss Dick dearly and he did a great job and that school was uh, like you said a huge part of his life so he did um, the only other thing I wanted to ask was if people wanted to donate maybe you could tell them where yep. they could they uh, donations can uh, be sent to the Gates School attention Gates PTO check is made out to the Gates PTO um, and um, um, it really is I you know they just did a ceremony at Gates on Friday it was a beautiful ceremony and those kids they just were so good and and there's kids that uh, wrote a song for him um, other kids wrote poems and they just he really touched everybody that he worked with the staff the students um, students from years ago people in town he's a happy guy and um, and I think he'd be really proud of this so to uh, motion uh. Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to grant permission for the use of town-owned property for the installation of memorial benches at the Gates Intermediate School. Second. Discussion? No discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thanks, Linda. Okay, moving on to item agenda number six. <clears throat> It's a discussion vote for temporary extension and hours of an entertainment license for the River Club. And before us is, is this um, Ms. Ellen McKenzie? Yes. Good evening. Good evening. Could you just briefly explain to the board what you're looking for? Yes, it's, um, after the Cohasset High School prom, they arrive at midnight, they leave at 4 a.m., we have a police detail, and it's just DJ food and a, a mechanical bull this year. <laughs> and did you do it last year? I did it last year, and I did it the year before that. Right. And they um, well behaved, no problems, and you know, nice and organized group. Mechanical bull, did yeah. you say? <laughs> They're going to do that. Is that year. the first year? This is the first. Okay. <laughs> <You're really laughs> like, going around the stage, <laughs> it's going to be it'll be a padded area. Yeah, go flying. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm thinking liability here, but uh, uh, got it you know, okay. Um, Discussion from the board? Anybody? I mean, the, the thing that came to mind to me was the hours and the abutters. It, have you spoken? Have you gotten complaints in the past, or the no. abutters say? No, you hadn't. You know, most likely the air conditioning will be on, and we just—it's a DJ. Right. And he was there last year. He was there both years, so um, and they didn't complain. Yeah, I haven't noticed in the yeah. past two years the complaints. It's actually a good opportunity to try to keep the kids there mm -hmm. from going off site to somewhere else potentially. Mm -hmm. so. Yes. Again, it was for after the Coasa prom. After the Coasa prom. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I too, you know, it's it's an important time. My daughter just went to it, and you know, you're worried all night long. All night. Um, how are you going to work it? If the if the kids go, you're going to let them leave. How's they, that going to work? They can only leave with the parent. Um, okay. And they have the parent has to come to the door and Good. take the child. And this is your third year, third so year. you're so you're experienced at it. You've yes. you've figured I out all the angles that they've oh, tried right. to. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. And we actually have no problem. I mean, I have had right. any problem. Yeah. Like I, I agree with the others. I haven't heard anything, and I mm -hmm. thank you for taking that on. Okay. Motion. Move the board of selectmen vote to grant. A request to extend the hours of entertainment for the River Club at 78 Border Street from 12 midnight Friday, May 28th, 2010 to 4 a.m. on Saturday, May 29th, 2010. Second. The, the extension in hours is for indoor music with a disc jockey only. Second. Any discussion? No discussion. All in favor? One, uh, one quick. Uh, I'll just state the obvious. Obviously, there's not any alcohol on no premise. Alcohol. It's, and all, it's all put away, locked up. And right. They don't even go near the bar. It's actually, they have sodas all around them. They right. Fall in. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very, very much. Good. Thank you. Have to give it a whirl, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> good luck. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Moving along to item number seven. This is a discussion vote of the Hawkers Peddler's License for PJ's Hot Dog Express. With us is, is it Paula Pulaski? Yes. 
Mr. Joseph Spinzola. Spinzola. Mr. Spinzola, good evening. Jay. Thank you. Um, again, uh, you're looking for um, a hawker's peddler's license to sell hot dogs. Um, I had a few questions. Um, where are you looking to sell them, just generally? Um, In speaking with uh, Jennifer Lamb, we live on Rebecca Road. Yep. And we requested the end spot there by the lighthouse, and she was agreeable to that. And Good place. if there are other places or whatever, we want a regular place where we're going to be, right, you know. Um, but if we wanted to move, I'm not sure who we have to check with or where we have to go or whatever. Well, I think we normally, we give you a license, which doesn't necessarily say that you are specified for one area. You kind of can go generally around town. I think the questions that we've had in the past have been generally, if everybody's wanting to go to the same spot, then we kind of have to figure out how logistically that works. And, and um, But I think you're the first ones at the Lighthouse, if I'm not mistaken. And um, I know the ball fields could use them, having been out in the ball fields these past Saturdays. Um, but, you know, Cole Parkway. Um, Sand Hills, but that uh, was the other suggestion was called Parkway. Then, but and that's generally my understanding, unless I'm mistaken. Uh, Kim, am I? Is that? Well, there's already. How many are there? Isn't there one or two current? This would be the third cart um, this year. One is specifically asked for Hummer Rock. The last one that was here. The other one tends to go to the beach parking lots. Um, okay. And stay for part of the day. And then Building. That's right, Peggy, I think. Was what it was. I might mention with Cole Parkway is you don't want to take any business away from the, um, the store. That's a good point. There. Right. right. We really weren't looking in that direction. So, so you're looking primarily at Lighthouse Park area yep. on, on, the, on Cedar Point. Okay. And what's your operation? Is it a push cart? Is it a vehicle? Is it a we have purchased um, the cart we purchased. We invested a little under $6,000 in it. Um, I can show you a picture of it. Yeah. And the company we obtained the cart from has been in business for 32 years. It's uh, NSF, UL, and DOT approved. Tight tech. Yeah, impressive. Looks like it can do the job. How much are your hot dogs? <laughs> Six thousand divided by two fifty. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I entertain a motion. Move the board of selectmen vote to grant the Hawkins Peddler's license to JP's Hot Dog Express from Memorial Day to Labor Day. Uh, with the uh, from eleven a.m. to four p.m. Good. With the temporary waiver of the 15-minute rule, selectman policy number 43-99 must be in compliance with all of the conditions set by the policy 43-99 uh, and is subject to Board of Health inspection. Second. Second. All in favor or discussion? Um, do we want to put a location down? Because Kim had a good point about the harbor, and we do have other people at other areas. If you're, I mean, if you're, and it also Rebecca kind of. Rebecca Road would be, that's really. Or this, or that, what would you call that area? Lighthouse? Sand Hills. Yeah. Sand Hills. Does that make we'll sense? In the far left corner, there's a little grassy knoll there, and uh, we shouldn't take up uh, more than two, two spots. No, no, I'm not, I, I think that place is perfect. I'm just yeah. wondering about, like, I didn't want two hot dog places next no, to each we, other. Yeah, we don't want to do that. Yeah. Uh, what do you guys think? Does that make sense? Uh, what do you think, John? I, 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 I have no problems. I'd, I'd say just put Sand Hills. Yeah. And go down the street. All right. That, and I don't have a problem with that. And they seem to be fine out in Lighthouse Point. How would you feel if they set up at the parking lot, you know, close to Thornton's or what Riddles or what it's called now? How, do you, how would you feel about that? Isn't That's that the point. idea of you our policy? What? Joe, you know, <coughs> and it doesn't sound like yeah. you want to do that, no. but if we just said Sand Hills, you could. The idea is we don't want to. Yes. authorize you or anyone else to set up shop right next to a established business we wouldn't, that's so not something I wouldn't do yeah. that it's, um, I know you might not but if you know if we don't the lighthouse. yeah you know. how about if we put uh, if somebody would amend it in the vicinity of the lighthouse okay. how would that excellent I'll accept that amendment okay so, great. so we have um, we have uh, first and a second an amendment discussion any further discussion all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Good you, luck. folks. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. 
Moving on to item number eight. This is a discussion vote of Hawker Peddler's license for No Situate Farmers Market. And I guess in particular we're looking for Susan Young, yes. Paula, Paula Kaufman. Kaufman, Marie Foley, and uh, Sandra Higgins. Who do we have? Susan Young. Susan Young, okay. Ms. Young? And I'm Jess Lane, you guys have seen me a few times. But Marie just called me, told me she couldn't make it tonight. I don't know where Paula is. That's the uh, Marie Foley. 11 yeah, spoonfuls. The and jams. Gotcha. Okay. So, Ms. Young, yes. looks like you're applying for um, obviously a Hawker Peddlers uh, to sell baked goods Correct. for farmers market. Mm -hmm. And you're from Situate. That's good too. We like that. Um, just any questions from? Well, what are you going to sell? Are you going to sell? Tea breads, uh, assorted cookies, bar cookies, and cakes, pretty much in bulk. Are you trying to suggest we should test Maybe them out? Maybe other samples. <laughs> 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 I think of being samples. But it's okay. You don't have to. That's not needed. <laughs> I'm really on the fence. <laughs> okay. So only things made with real sugar, real butter, and they're awfully delicious. <laughs> not fatty. <laughs> should we wait, Mr. Chairman, and do all of them at once in the same motion? That's what I'm wondering. Should we? Does that make sense? Are we still waiting for the other people then? Or no, no, Sandy's here. Oh, okay. Do what do I was going to say, why don't you call, come on up, and we'll, we'll, then we'll, we'll do them all, and just tell us what, what you're looking at. Sandy. Who are you? I'm sorry. Sandy Higgins. Ms. Higgins. Okay. Yeah, I like to sell uh, my fresh fruit, uh, blueberries, strawberries, raspberries and vegetables, you name it, I have it. And she can make pies for us, you know? <laughs> uh, That's right. You're also from Situate, I see. Okay. That's very good. Okay. Do you grow these at your own? In my own yard. In your own yard. Yeah, we used to do the honeybees, but um, I think they got them and I took some of them. <laughs> 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 Bad year for bees. Um, Questions on... Uh, uh, Ms. Higgins, anybody? No. Right. That's the true farmer market product. <coughs> it is indeed. Um, now, I forgot your name. Jessica. Jessica. You're not um, Marie Foley, but you're sitting here for her? Yeah, she just called, says so she couldn't make it. So okay. I know her product. She's um, just mailed out the stuff to Board of Health. She has Serve Safe Kitchen and all that stuff. And she's selling jams and jellies yeah. that she makes yep. herself. Is that what it is? Okay, so it's not importing it or anything like that. Loving spoonfuls. That's, that's and um, we don't have, it uh, looks like, uh, to dine for. Paula Kaufman is not here. Is that I what I understand? I haven't heard from her, but. Okay. She's, what is she looking at? Middle Eastern foods? Hummus, tabbouleh, feta, olives, and... Baba uh, Ganosh. So maybe we better hold off in case you change your mind, rather than Okay. Hmm. So we'll hold off on her. But how about um, any other discussion on the remaining three? Oh, uh, a motion, please. Move the board of selectmen vote to grant Hawker's Petrol license to Susan J. Young, DBA Mouse Cakes. Paula, uh, no, we're not doing that one, right? Very fully. We're going to skip that one. Marie Foley, DBA Love and Spoonfuls, and Sandra Higgins to sell goods at North Situate Town Owned Commuter Rail Parking Lot in front of the WPA building from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. on Wednesdays from May 1st, 2010 to October 31st, 2010. These licenses have a temporary waiver of the 15 minute rule, Selectman's Policy Number 43 99, and are on subject to inspection and conditions set by the Board of Health. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Good luck. Thank Very you. good. Thank good you, ladies. Good, good luck. luck. Okay, moving on to item number nine. It's a discussion vote, special events permit for the Cohasset Triathlon. And on behalf of that, it looks like Mr. Burnett's here. Good Hello, evening, man. Mr. Burnett. Good evening. Hello. You're back. I'm back. Hello, now hello. we see you're How on another you? event. Good. So, right. So, my name is Bill Burnett. I'm a resident of Cohasset. Um, my company, Streamlight Events, produces the Cohasset Triathlon, the Nanteca Triathlon, the Marlboro Triathlon, and the Situate Duathlon. What I'm here to uh, get your approval on is 
Um, the Cohasset Triathlon is in its fourth year, and we are and we are uh, actually part of the bike course does travel <coughs> through North Situate. Excuse me. Um, if you were to th think on a map, we're, we're, the bikers are traveling uh, down Border Street, then on to Gannett, and making a right on Mordecai Lincoln Road, and then back onto Main Street towards Cohasset. Um, the past three years have gone extremely smoothly. Uh, uh, Lieutenant Ted Coyle has been fantastic. We have a team already set in place. We have about five or six details already in that area. Um, are how there many, any questions? How many, yeah, years I, has, how many years have we done, has this event gone through Situate, Mr. Burnett? Uh, three years. Three years, the third year? Okay. Um, are you aware that there may be some problems with Mordecai Lincoln, uh, the street, uh, as far as like, being torn up, the condition, up, of, the the condition of the road. I am not aware of that now. Okay. Um, in the documentation that we got, that was the biggest concern: is that with all those bikes going down, it might not be the safest route. Right. For the for the bikes, the well, residents have been calling us for a long time to have that road done over, and it's just gotten to the point where I think Al has told us that in a matter of time they're just going to do everything, sidewalks and everything. So it isn't real. Some of those bikes are real expensive, so. Yeah, right, exactly. And what we do, yeah, that, that's a very fair concern. And one of the things we do, we do chalk off uh, the holes in the roads, if there are any potholes, if you will. Um, I think it's actually okay. It's suitable for what we're doing. And you have been up quite, there. In fact, in fact, gentlemen, it's probably even safer because if you go even further down, then you've got the railroad crossing, which is also a big challenge. So it really is probably the best way to go at this point. But I'll certainly take a look at it. I, I wish you would, only because there could be, you know, with the bikes and the speeds safety. and everything else, for safety for them hitting it. I, I, yep. I know you're saying with the railroad, and that's the last thing we want to do. Right. If I'm not mistaken, the roadway doesn't cross over the tracks there. There is the, the right. guard that it goes down. It's close to it, but you can make that right corner turn. But um, okay. that's the concern that the Department okay. of Public yep. Works has. Fair enough. Um, Plus, I also read there's, not, is it 900 or 800? That's right. So there's a lot of traffic. Well, it, it's really spread out, actually, at the, at no, the I'm, time. I'm so more concerned about not in the whole race itself, but on that stretch of street. You know, it's a relatively small stretch of street. It's, it has a big left turn in it. So if you had a bunch of people coming down an area that right. was a bunch of potholes, you know. Uh, we've, we've, we've tackled it the last couple, two years that we've done this, down Mordecai Lincoln. Mm -hmm. And uh, so and I've, I've pulled the, the fastest racers, the beginners, and no one seems to have. We mark it pretty well. We mark it pretty well. All right. Further discussion from the board? Oh. Motion? Oh, one in the back. Oh, yes. Yes. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. What is the date and time of this event? Ah, uh, great. Thank you. The date is uh, Sunday, June, June the 27th. Uh, time frame approximately through North Citrus will be um, between 9.05 and 10.30 in the morning. Yeah. Did it say people will be th through there? I'm sorry, go ahead. No. D describe, I'm sorry, I don't understand your question. Okay. Right. It's called the Cohasset Triathlon. What kind of approvals does the town of Cohasset require of you? I go in front of the selectmen uh, usually in March. And the nature of their approvals, do they have departments review them and, and go through a similar process here? No. Okay. They just, you just send them a letter and meet with the board. Right. I mean, I have, I have a great relationship with the local uh, authorities, with the police and fire. We have meetings regularly about the race, so I know them very well. And, and uh, so the, the communication is pretty seamless, but there isn't a, 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 a formal process such as what we have here in Situate. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Um, yeah. Right. Please uh, move the voter selectman vote to grant the special event permit application for the June 27, 2010 Cohasset Triathlon. Uh, approximate time, you said from 9 to 10.30, I believe. Yes. Yeah. And in accordance with all conditions set by the town of Situate. Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Burnett. Thank okay. you. Very well. Now we're moving on to item number nine on the agenda. Mr. Burnett, you can probably still sit. 
which is the uh, discussion vote of a special events permit for uh, actually in item 10, forgive me, um, which is the duathlon. Well, this is Nico oh, yeah. Afonseco. Thank you. Got your message. Thanks, Paul. All right, this is our third meeting, I think, if I'm not mistaken, um, this about this. And the last time we met in April, we'd asked you to go back and take a look mm -hmm. at not just an alternate date, which you have, but also an alternate location for staging and moving things around. In other words, taking it off of, out of the harbor area and placing it up towards Central Field, which is what you have done. And you've submitted this information again. I see what you've given us is, is apparently is a map of Central this Field of what you're looking at as far as the staging goes for, um, uh, for doing it. Am I correct? The, the handout is simply just a, a map of sort of the, the plan for Central Field as we've talked to multiple departments about. And you've talked to the police the and you've of, talked uh, to fire it looks like? Yep. We've, uh, the, the three main things I think that we, we kind of held off from last meeting were the police, the churches, and the rec department. Um, we did talk to the police. We've got pretty much a finalized plan. I believe that the chief should have sent something to the board uh, authorizing approval from his end at this point. Um, we have talked to the churches, um, First Unitarian specifically. I'm on the, the next meeting of their church parish committee, but I have spoken to multiple people at the church parish committee. They don't seem to have a problem with the getting in and out or the parking situation that, that we would possibly cause in the area. Um, they basically stick to their own lot. Um, I have spoken to the pastor and the committee at St. Mary's Church as well, which is obviously the probably most challenging church to deal with uh, that morning on a Sunday morning. And uh, Pastor um, Ken Cannon um, has spoken to me. We basically come to an agreement that we're going to work together to try and make sure everything's pretty seamless on that end. Uh, don't anticipate any real challenges there. We're going to give them plenty of notice to the parishioners as well as the congregation, the, um, the, the child care over at the other side of the road there, et cetera. So uh, we don't anticipate any problems there. We've come up with a parking and an exit strategy for that timing as well for the two masses that we would affect as bikers come through on, um, on Kent Street. Um, I've spoken to the rec department. I've gotten clearance and approval from them to use the, um, the field and more specifically Central Park Drive um, and the portion of the field off of the, uh, off of the playing field area. Um, there were concerns about grass damage and usage and so we've uh, come to a position where we feel very comfortable with, with using the space without damaging any grass that could challenge softballs and, uh, and other seasons there. Uh, and I think they're very happy with the plan we've presented to them, gotten their approval. Um, one of the things that came up, just to, to mention it, um, as I said, we're, we're trying to cross as many T's as we can, as we always do. One of the things that came up in planning this, this essentially new version of the race uh, was the housing authority, which is there at Central Field. Uh, I have talked to housing. I have gotten housing approval um, as uh, housing authority approval and um, working with the director there to make sure the residents there are, are not only happy with our use of that road and, and keeping away from their parking lot and access to the building uh, in and out of their building, but also to make sure that really we encourage them to, to support the race. Uh, and I've got a number of people working on that to make sure that really they're not just acceptable with our, with our presence, but happy with our presence up there, uh, being that they're so close to where we'll be setting up. Um, I've really, I think, covered everything that I was asked to cover and tried to think of anything else that could come up. We, we're really ready to go at this point. Uh, we'd like to open registration basically tomorrow afternoon. Um, we held off on that specifically to, to make sure that we were very comfortable with everything from our end as well as yours uh, and the town. Discussion, Mr. Norton? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I think, uh, as you mentioned, this is the third time the gentleman has been before us and uh, we've made some suggestions, and I think those, without those suggestions being followed up on, it probably would be a real problem tonight. But I, I don't have a problem in that uh, we asked them to do things. They did, it seems, everything we asked them to do. It's probably the biggest race we have, so I think a lot, of, uh, a lot more spotlight was put on it than maybe than some of the other races. But it would be di very difficult for me to vote no tonight, no, no, will I, after they coming forward and done everything we've, we've asked them to do, so I'm a yes. Anybody? 
Nico, can you do me a favor and just run through sure. what is going to happen on race day on that map there? Yep. The, the map that I gave you essentially uh, looks at where we're starting at Central Park Field, which essentially would be below the word this area yeah. here. Um, this is the map laid out of the old course. I apologize, we didn't want to throw 17 different colors of highlighter on it. But essentially, the, the new course essentially is going to leave this field, come out, um, and go up Country Way. Oh, here we go. I'm sorry. Here's Central Park Drive. We're going to come out and go down First Parish Road uh, to right before the tracks at the fire station. We're going to make a sharp right up uh, and back onto Cudworth. That's running. Sorry? That's running? Yes, yeah, running. The okay. first section of the race is running. So it's a short internal triangle. We're not affecting country way traffic. We're not affecting any of the town traffic, driftway traffic. And actually, we hope to have a plan that will keep uh, First and Parish basically open, Beaver Dam basically open the whole time that that first run is taking place. They will come back on Cudworth and cross over First Parish, at wh which point for about a five or ten minute period, there might be either a partial closing or a closing of First Parish Road. But that's going to be at about 9 o'clock or earlier in the morning. On a Sunday. So, on a Sunday. So we don't anticipate that much of a backup in traffic at that point anyhow. Um, again, they'll come into the transition area, leave on their bicycles, coming out uh, Branch Street, which turns into Country Way, coming up to Hollis Street, which comes up to uh, Gannon Road, coming up and around Minot, coming back down onto Hatherley. We'll take Hatherley all the way down to Jericho Road to Front Street, come through past St. Mary's, and like I said, we've got a plan in effect to make sure that that's not a problem. Come back around, just like we did last year, to the train station up and over Stockbridge Road Bridge to make sure we avoid the train tracks. Coming back up to Country Way and, and back up to Cudworth, where this year we'll be cutting back through Cudworth instead of continuing on, so we avoid the lights at, at First Parish Road, therefore minimizing traffic problems. Coming back into the transition area, then leaving the same direction on foot, <coughs> excuse me, coming out Branch Street, um, turning right onto Curtis, right onto Lawson Road, which winds uphill back and around the sharp curve. Again, avoiding Beaver Dam Road because it's an internal circle, which means we're eliminating traffic again at the last section of the race for the most part, and uh, coming through the finish line at the field. And so are there going to be run. are there going to be tents at the field? Is that I know last year you there'll had entertainment be, and stuff like that. Yes, there'll be a tent at the field. There'll be uh, essentially the same setup at the field that we had down on Cole Parkway. Um, there'll be um, there'll be a, a small tent for music. Uh, it's going to be as far away from the housing authority building as possible, but we will be encouraging them to come over and enjoy. Um, there'll be um, basically a registration tent where people will come in, register if they haven't got pick up their packets, their t-shirts, etc. And then we'll have a, a small line of sponsored tents uh, like we did in the parking lot last year, but they'll be, like I said, essentially set up either at the edge of the playing field, uh, if it's good weather like today where it's dry, safe, the grass is healthy, or if there's any adverse conditions, we've got a backup plan to set them up basically squeezed in on the road next to the transition area, which is on pavement, so that there's no damage to any of the, the field. Great. Two last questions. The time, it starts at 8, and you expect it to be done by? The race starts at 845, should be the starting gun. Uh, we'll, we'll be there earlier than that, setting up and making sure that everything's registered. But the roads, in terms of the? In terms of the actual loop, the, the race should start right about 845 sharp. And uh, I think we anticipate it being done. Uh, 1040 should be the absolute last runner off the course. A couple hours. Uh, and we'll be off the field before noon. Great. And then in some of the emails, parking was the biggest concern. <clears throat> Parking is the one thing that I haven't locked up because the state, frankly, is challenged to work with, but we're working on gaining the MBTA lot as well again this year, which we did last year. Uh, I don't anticipate it being a problem, but that's where we plan to, to park everyone other than the volunteers uh, because they get there early and there should be plenty of space for them. It's not a large number of cars. Um, and I'm working with the police to make sure that's not an issue. Um, we really shouldn't be parking anybody uh, from the actual race community anywhere near the field, and they'll be bussed in and bussed out. Great. Could you, could, could you, could you, uh, could the not situate lot be used? Um, I mean, our lot, right? I, you, I, I, well, think, I, you, you would never get permission from the MBTA. Hmm. It's a good point. Um, good, good I hadn't really thought of it because I, I, I frankly kind of assumed that, that we, we went so far out of our way to try and make sure we were helping and avoiding the merchants in the harbor and 
uh, parking is the number one issue in the harbor uh, besides causing any disruption of business. Um, I frankly hadn't even thought of trying for the North Situate lot because I almost assumed that there would be businesses up there that didn't want their parking spaces being taken. It's certainly something that we could look into. The other thing that we want to gauge, I think, as we get closer is uh, just how many races we have in this initial burst. Uh, this year we expect a much faster registration process because people now know about us. But I think that parking lot in North Situate, and I'm not <coughs> suggesting this, I'm just tossing it out there isn't used by merchants, uh, you know, on a Sunday morning. Do you mean, uh, I, I apologize, the one uh, with do you mean the lot at the train station? No. Or do you mean the lot no. internal to North Situate by WPA building. Yeah. No, no, yeah. no, 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 no w WPA building. Oh, the WPA building. That's yeah, right. uh, the I mean, town that's, parking lot. Yeah. That's the town it's, lot. Uh, it's certainly something that I'd be happy to consider. What's, you got the high you? school and the town hall parking yep. lot, too, which yep. is well, a little closer. I've specifically been asked not to use the high school lot. And I'm going to avoid it. Okay. I think they said you can use the library, limited spacing, because it doesn't open to one. Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. So we, we're hoping to, frankly, get approval to <coughs> excuse me, hold the, the parking at the MBTA, because it was free last year. It was a struggle, but it was. And if we can do that, it raises our charity uh, donations. And it allows us to park everybody in one place, which uh. makes it less confusing for the racers. Mr. Um, um, Just a Harris. a couple of questions. <coughs> How many do you expect in total would participate? Well, if you had a guess. last year we had 430 at the actual yeah. race, 525 registered. I think, um, you know, we're, like I said, we're, we're probably expecting slightly more than last year. You're right. But, um, mm -hmm. right. but I just don't have a good number for you until we give another two or three weeks to see how this first burst mm -hmm. goes. So it could be five, 600. The only thing that makes me nervous, and I appreciate everything you've done, jump through hoops, going by St. Mary's at about what time? You, you've got to be hitting. Uh, We're going to be going by St. Mary's. The first fastest racer should be going past St. Mary's intersection at about 9, 12 to 9, 15 in the morning. The last racer should be going through there at about 9.45, 9.50 in the morning. It'll be about a 45-minute split, and we're going to affect, from their end, the exit of the 9.30, 8.30 to 9.30 mass when people come out, which shouldn't be much of an issue, actually, because we'll have plenty of advance notice for people, and they'll all be coming at once, and all the people in the main lot there will be going up First Parish away from Kent Street. There won't be anybody really turning a left or right turn. So that's not that difficult, plus they're already in the church, which means the pastor can remind them right then and there, please remember the police aren't going to let you turn right on Kent Street. Uh, so they'll be leaving, and that really shouldn't be an issue. The, the, the other challenge is the slow and steady flow of people coming in for the uh, uh, 10 o'clock, I believe it is, service, which obviously they don't all come at once, which means there'll be people kind of coming in, and we do have a plan to try and post a couple volunteers and people up the way on uh, Kent Street so that people can come up Greenfield and up other roads to try and avoid a bottleneck right at the intersection. Uh, but we are comfortable with the plan, and I believe that Father uh, Cannon is comfortable with our progress so far and making sure it's safe and, and steady. You, you, couple, uh, go ahead, Joe. No, no I, I get just, a couple just, more. You're going to have a... You are going to have cars on Kent Street. We are not going to be parking cars for the church on Kent Street that no, morning. The parishioners will park on Kent Street. We are not going to be parking parishioner cars on Kent Street that morning. So they're going to be the, from the stop sign southward on Kent. They won't be parking for, on Kent for, Street. Okay. They they park about. 20 or 30 cars on Kent yep, Street normally, yep, yep. and those cars won't be there. They'll be packing up there, and, and I am working on that. It's, be it's 20 or 30 where, cars. And the main. The most likely scenario is I'm hoping the police will will help us cordon off a space down towards the Little League field on. Yeah. Uh, Foster. Name is, towards Second Cliff. Okay. Yes, thank you, yeah. Foster. Foster, Foster, Foster Road. Okay. Uh, so but but that's something that. Now, that we know. Is there going to be one lane of traffic open on Kent Street and on the Kent Street will be open both lanes. Okay. Yeah, so bikers go with traffic and they will be going through there. It, it shouldn't be closed off completely okay. at any so point. So you can get to the golf course or in the Correct. Yeah. The, the, the only thing you really won't be able to do is during that period of about nine, the first few races come through and nobody really notices, mm -hmm. but between about 9.15 till about 9.35, 9.40, you're not going to be able to really take a left going north on Kent Street, left up First Parish. Because that's the hardest thing for police and bikers and other traffic to handle is a car slowly turning left. Um, right turns and, and going straight through the intersection really shouldn't be an issue. So I, I got to follow up before. So you're going to have the parishioners not park on Kent Street? <coughs> That's the plan right now, but like I, I, think I said, a lot it is of those people park there because it's difficult for them to get into the church. 
And if you're, you're now you're going to have them park a little further away. Get into the church in what sense? Sorry. For mass. But I mean, because there's no space left in the parking lot, or because physically both they, they might get or there because they're they, handicapped, or exactly they might not be handicapped, but they might be elderly and they might get there. Early. Just just keep that in mind. I you know I think it, it's you know right now the idea is basically to have it. What we did last year was we gated it off. There was actual fencing there. You couldn't park a car there if you tried All right. because okay. the police really didn't want anybody even guessing that they right. could. Uh, mm -hmm. That's the plan right now. But like I said, I am working with Father Cannon and the, and the committee really to cooperatively figure out the best plan possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I just had one last question. And it, it, You've worked. You've gone before the Recreation Commission. I had a conflict. I had another meeting. I couldn't be there. But they've made a modification to their support in, in allowing you to use the field, and that's... To work very closely with Paul Sherry to yes, make sure I'm working you know, with Paul there's irrigation on that field. And I don't think you'd do a whole lot of damage with bikes, but we're actually uh, this is what Paul does. Right. So we're actually know. not going to be on the field. Okay. The if you if you imagine and that's why I put your map together, if you imagine that those ball fields that I drew on the on the map have basically a fence around three sides and the last side which faces Central Park Drive is open and it's got a wooden fence barrier. Right. Um, right. those pylons come to a berm that's about six eight feet high and comes down to the playing field level and there's about 15 20 feet before you see the chalk line of the edge of the playing field we won't be on the chalk we won't be on the playing field we will be between that white line and that wooden fence in the berm um, at best and that's if conditions allow if it's pouring rain like last year which i'm hoping it isn't we will be on the road we'll be on the surface all right any other questions from the board Open it quickly to the audience. Any questions from the audience? Um, Mr. Collin, might you had your hand up first. Uh, yeah, just to confirm. Just to, if you could identify yourself and address for the. Okay, thank you. Uh, just to confirm, the use of concrete would be for one pass by the uh, by grace. Yep. From about quarter past nine to over ten something. In that range, yes. No, Front Street's not going to be closed off. Bikers are going to be coming through with traffic. Coming through from Jericho Road down. Yep. Down towards. Uh, yep. Just going north to south. Yep. Thank you. Ms. And that's Sunday morning. So Sunday morning. It's Sunday morning. Close. Right. Ms. Ferguson, you had asked, raised your hand. Yeah, I just want to say. Your address, just for. Um, Linda Ferguson. Uh, oh, 57 Kingsway. Thank Sorry. you. All right. And also uh, Seven Beaver Dam. Very good. I just wanted to say, last year, um, uh, I thought they ran a great race. I think this is a great way to show off the town. Um, it, was, it went very smooth being down there in the harbor. Um, I don't actually exercise myself, but my husband does, and he loved the race. He said it was very well run. Um, and I just, I think that they've done everything that the town's asked them to do, and I, I, I hope there's support there. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Any further? You know, I, I want to reiterate what Joe said. I appreciate all the effort you've put into this. You know, I what I do see is your the sticking point, as Sean brought up, is going to be the church parking and the church traffic. So, you know, that may come back to be the thorn, but we'll. Well, like I said, the the main thing is that we're. we're we really are approaching it cooperatively, which means I don't anticipate people yelling and screaming at me too much because not only do we have a plan and we have advanced notice but we're not <coughs> trying to fight over turf we're actually trying to basically sit down at the same table and work out a compromise good um, from my standpoint I, I, I um, I'm appreciative that you've gone back to the proverbial drawing bar to redesign uh, the race I think both of you have taken great efforts to do so I think the race um, for a second year, you've learned a lot through your first experience. I think obviously the town has requested and asked you to do more. I think you've done that, and I think, you know, this race, will, it'll pay off. And I, I think it's going to be a, a good partnership hopefully going forward. So um, I appreciate you both, your, your, you. your willingness to, uh, to, to answer the questions that the board has asked of you. So. Thank you. Um, motion? Oh, did you have? Yes, Kim. So you'll need to do that from, you know, August, September, the latest. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So keep that in mind. One last, I, I should probably ask, Tricia, do you have nope. anything? Okay. All right. So. Make a motion. A motion, please. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant the special event permit application for 
Sunday, October 17, 2010, duathlon. Uh, approximate time is 8.45 until, well, I don't guess I don't have to need the end time, um, at the new site that's described here with the staging being done at Central Field and in accordance with all conditions set by the town of Situate. A second? Second. Discussion? Just quickly, you, you, do you need to have setup though? 8.45 is when it, when it kicks off. So what's your setup time that you're looking at? We'll, well, we'll be setting up the evening before in terms of some of the, the staging and fencing. Okay. It's not going to be in the way of traffic and, and such really until probably about 5.30, 6 o'clock at night. Uh, we won't be in the way of the housing authority at any point uh, because they'll have access in and out the south end completely at all times. And um, but in other words, the, morning, you're gonna... the morning of, we'll be down there probably at 5.30 or 6 o'clock, but there's really not much setup that goes into it except for the vendors coming in at 7.30, 8 o'clock. Right. So do we need to amend the time then? Because it's, it's 8.45. I, I think you need to have it at like 7, don't you? I, I think that's an interesting point. That road is going to, it won't be passable is what, what you're saying. Central Park Drive. Central Park Drive at a certain time on Saturday evening. Pursue. Okay, well, hold on for one second. That's another issue that I now. Okay, let's back up for a second. Are you saying that you're going to be needing to block off Central Park Central Drive, Park. Mm -hmm. Central Park, the road but on Central Park Central Saturday? Park Drive. Saturday evening. Saturday evening, we set up all the fence. We can't set up all the fencing for the race in okay one right. hour. So, so we Does set it that actually up Saturday close the night. road. Not First Parish or any other road. No, no, Central, Park Central Park Drive, Park internal Park. to the field. Um, yeah. It's hard for me to say for sure this can be completely closed. The fire chief has basically asked me to, to make sure we, we provide some access um, at all times, which we are doing. Um, yeah. I believe that because of the way that we're going to set it up to stay off the field, the fencing is probably going to take up enough space that we're not going to want You're, public traffic on that let road. Let me interject there for a second, Nico. You're going to need to keep that road open. you got central field there, or the central, the housing authority. If the fire department needs to get up there, no, they're going to come up. The fire, oh, no, a fire truck be, will be able okay. to get to that building you're, at you're all gonna times. You're going to need that. That's what I mean. Yeah. Okay. Is that? Uh, okay. Well, initially, it kind of sounded like you're shutting it down completely, and I'm like, you're going to need to do that road. Well, that's open. actually why I tried to, to mark it off on here, and it's right. it's not a huge map, but okay. the 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 northern entrance of Central Park Drive will be open to resident, police, fire, EMT traffic at all times. Fair enough. That, that, that I misheard you and I it's apologize. Okay. I, I thought you said you're sure shutting it clear. down. So I'm like, so okay. Let me see if I understand it right. So there's two entrances. Correct. The one closest to Gates School is going to be closed? The one closest to Gates School will be closed at about, well, we can keep it open until probably 7, 30, 8 o'clock on Saturday <coughs> night. But at some point Saturday night it will be closed. Okay. What? So I, this is what I'm trying to get clear. Hold on one second. Nico, you're saying that the road's going to be closed. We understand during the race it's going to be shut off, okay, because you can't be having bikes and cars going. Starting Saturday night, though, there's got to be some form of access, certainly for public vehicles, whether it's a fire truck or ambulance, to go through there, I'm assuming. I think he, what he's saying is you just go in the other entrance. They're going to go in there's, by the library. There's two library. entrances, so by the library you will have access so this 24 will be, hours a day. This will be shut okay. down. Okay. I Hawkins understand. and back. For, for the residents. Okay. Correct. The parking is on that north side, so they come in that side anyhow. Right. All right. All right. I understand. The only thing to be aware of is I think there's soccer games that go on on that field, so maybe 7.30. On, sa maybe. on Saturday. On Saturday, but they're not they're at dark. On. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So there's, there's like, the only thing that happens on that field Sunday is the softball, normally right. the senior men's softball, and they are actually moving to a different field that day that's what wreck is i'm sorry i asked the question i only oh, asked okay. because it's seven o'clock in the morning you're going to need to have I don't mind being permit clear. starting so you can get yeah. started so seven o'clock okay to start in the morning that's fine all right is somebody just amend that to 7 a.m fair enough okay all in favor all right. aye 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 thank you gentlemen, gentlemen thank, thank you very much, much. Thank good luck thank you. You. get out of dodge while you can <laughs> <laughs> all right thank moving you. along um let's go to item number 11 which is a discussion vote special permit for the knights of columbus carnival I always say this, gentlemen, I know you're here from the Knights of Columbus. I'm a knight. I'm not an active member of your, your council. I make that disclosure openly. I just want to let you know that. And I think uh, I just want to make sure you're aware of it. 
I don't have a problem. I don't suppose you do, do you gentlemen, for me to participate. Very good. Okay. <laughs> there we are. Okay. Um, so, obviously, this is about the carnival. Briefly, Mr. Limbach, would you like, or Mr. Brady, would you Mr. please? Brady. Uh, yes. What we're looking for is permission to have our annual carnival. Uh, there's no changes from what we've done for, I would say, at least 35 years that I've been involved in it. Uh, what we're looking for is the area from, from Lucian Russo's landing over towards the Harbor Place, the, har the Harbor Masters building from the islands towards, towards the, 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 the bandstand. That's the area that we're looking for. We're looking forward from July 13th through the 17th. That would be Tuesday through Saturday. What we would be also looking to do is to set up on Monday. The, the rides would be coming in. They, they close down at their previous location. They come in and, uh, late Sunday night, Monday morning. At that point, Monday would be a setup day. Tuesday, we go through all of the inspections. We open up Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. Typically, we go Tuesday through Thursday, 7 to 10.30, 11 at the latest. Most of the time, it, during the week, it's 10.30. Uh, Friday, we go uh, from 7 to about 11. And then on uh, Saturday, we go probably a little bit after 11 because we have the fireworks both Friday night and Saturday at 11. The only thing I, I was going to ask is, I think I've asked you this last year. If not, uh, I, maybe... Would you consider doing fireworks on Friday earlier instead of putting them later at night so that if their kid's up, they can see them? We've had some internal discussion on it, and it's something that we're, that we're looking at. Um, it, we're willing to consider it. I think... The, at least one of the nights, that's that all I'm saying. The well, fireworks you know. are, are an attraction. Yeah. Right? And if, if somebody comes down at 10, then, then I can get them to, to play a few games and go on a few <laughs> rides between 10 and 11, <laughs> then our charity fund comes back up and, and benefits from it. Uh, I was only saying instead of doing them both nights early, at least one night. That's that's all for you know. Yeah, I think, I think it's just a thought. It, we can look at it to see what it is because we're also looking at what the the, 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 sig the cost associated with the details and how to handle that. Gotcha. Okay, on it. Actually, last year we did have the fireworks on Friday night. I believe did go off a little earlier yeah. due to the wind yeah. and so forth. Uh, but like Bill was saying, it does affect the flow of the carnival too if we do them earlier. So that is an issue. Mr. Well, just one quick comment. The only thing I remember from last year was, and you guys may remember as well, was there an issue with where they were parking or staying afterwards? A few years ago, but then they've addressed that. Yeah. Yeah. What happened is that was, that was an issue that we had. And subsequently what happens is now that the, the, as part of our contract with the operator is that the, the, there will be no view. The, we minimize the number of storage vehicles that will be at, on the Cole Parkway. In that most of the time, the, the, the people, the operators, will actually be staying down at Marshfield. Right, Fiesta Shows does, does the Marshfield Fair, and in effect, that they've got an arrangement, so they do that. So that's you know, the only thing I recall from yeah, the last one. Couple years. The other thing, is just, to, just to, to make sure that we're, we, we put on record, is, is once I've got approval, then I, I work with all the department heads. So whether it's Brian Stewart, where we've had informal discussions, uh, the, the fireworks permits through the fire chief, and that. Neil Duggan has got a special role in terms of what his legal requirements are, so I work with Neil as well as Jennifer. So I work with and, and Mike Green. Uh, so I work with the, the department heads or the people there to make sure that they are on board with what we're looking to do uh, on it. So. Well, motion. One, one other point that I'd like to raise, and that is, is that um, when I filled out the application, there was a uh, situate special event fee. And what I'm looking for is, is if you people would grant a waiver of that fee because all of the monies that we raise go to our charity account and we spend it supporting organizations and citizens of situate. So we're looking for a waiver of that. So the fee is waived if the money is rechanneled back into the community. Okay. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. I just, if I may, Mr. Yes. Chairman, I know that the security plan recommendations from the chief may have been different from those in the past. I didn't know if you, Chief Stewart had um, <coughs> shared those with you in terms of the number of uh, police officers in their hours. No, we're not. Because that would be the condition that the board would approve those under. And what would the, what would the change be? In terms of uh, you requesting security from 7 to 11, and the chief is um, requiring additional security for um, officers during the carnival, and because of um, fire, we, other officers need to be during the event as well. 
Okay. So that would be, in other words, what I, what I asked for was, and, and the reason I asked for it, so there's an understanding of the explanation is that that we, we run from like 7 to uh, 11, but the, 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 the nature of what happens, if you, if you follow the course of the evening, in the early part of the evening, people come down and bring their little kids. Right. And one of the things that we do is we provide Hampton rides and, and, and that. So the little you can bring your, it's a family event. You can bring the little kids down, and typically they go home. So they go home from seven to eight, you know they're down there for an hour or so, and then they go home. And then I get the what I call the tweens, and come up the, the the next group that comes down. Then I have the teenagers come in. So that that I have an early from seven to eight. I really don't have very many people on the lot. Right, so I was looking to come back up and take the detail and move the detail one from seven to eleven, and then have another detail come in from eight to twelve. So that in effect, the, the main body of the evening, when I've got the majority of the people there, I've got the maximum number of, of, of security people. But at the beginning, when I when I have a minimum crowd, and at the end, when I have a minimum crowd, then then I really don't need a full complement of, of thing. But but to the extent that the chief wants to have. A full compliment from seven to eleven, then I, I have no problem with that. I, I just want to make really yeah, that's clear the chief's aware of it, and some of this are beyond the chief's powers due to contractual obligations and yeah. how the details work. So yeah, I, yeah, I think I've been very fortunate. In fact, the town's fortunate to have the chief that we've got. But we, I've worked with him for a fair number of years, and we've worked it out. Okay. All right. Well, good. Motion, please. Unless further discussion. Oh, I'm looking at you, Mr. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mr. Vignani. <laughs> um, I'll make a motion. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant the special event permit application for Tuesday, July 13th through Saturday, July 17, 2010 for the Knights of Columbus Carnival and in accordance with all conditions set by the Town of Situate. Second. Any further discussion? In the audience mm. seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank Super. you, gentlemen. Thank Move. you. One Another more. motion, though, it looks like? Yes. Will the Board select and vote to grant permission to the Knights of Columbus to hold their annual carnival on Cole Parkway from July 13th to July 17, 2010. The carnival will be open each evening at 7 p.m., and there will be fireworks displayed at 11 p.m. on Friday and Saturday evenings. Set up to begin on Monday, July 12th, with no vehicles or trailers parked on Cole Parkway prior to that date. Second. Two votes uh, or two, um, a motion and a second, rather. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Gentlemen, thank you very good. Thank, thank you very much. You. It's unanimous. After this, you've got a question on the carnival or something, either give Mark or myself a call. It's a great event. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, moving on. We're going on to item 12. It's the announcements of vacancies on committees, commissions, boards, and councils. So folks uh, who are watching, um, annually we have committees, boards, and councils, positions that open up. Um, we're going to announce them. And at our next meeting, or would it be our next meeting or the meeting after? Would it be in two, two meetings? June 22nd. Actually. June 22nd. So about a month from now. We're asking you to, if you're interested, which we encourage you to get involved, um, submit. Uh, there is a, a form for what the committee or board or council you're interested in. And then uh, in our second, about a month from now, we'll have um, introductions. We'd like to meet you, discussion, and then uh, vote on the appointments. Um, so, Mr. Vignani, you're the clerk, if I'm not mistaken. And the benefit of being the clerk is you get to read everything. I'm so glad that you can. So could you please tell us the vac I would, vacancies? I am honored. Uh, the vacancies on committees, commissions, boards, and councils. On the historic commission, there is one vacancy. On the Council on Aging, there is one vacancy. On the CPC, uh, Community Preservation Act Committee, there is one at-large position available. On the Beautification Commission, there are two available. On the Affordable Housing Trust, there are two slots available. And we are in need of one fence viewer. Um, on top of that, do are these other ones need to be ver verified first, Kim? The three on the bottom? You received a new note there. Uh, oh. There's one on the Public Building Commission. Great. On the Public uh, Building Commission, there is one vacancy. On, on the Water Resource Committee, there is one vacancy. The one on the Animal Control Board also. Oh, that's right, the first one. Thank uh, you, Joe. Uh, animal Control Board, there is one as well. I was going to ask that... Uh, 
the, the mariner or the ledger or the mariner, but he's gone. We'll have to ask him to, to maybe put that in the mariner. It would be very helpful if he would. All right. Um, thank you, Mr. Clerk. Uh, moving on to the next one. Uh, 14, uh, 13 is a vote for uh, selectman liaison positions. In light of the fact that we're missing one of our board members, I was <coughs> suggesting that maybe we postpone this until our next meeting on June 8th <coughs> and we retain the positions that we have as liaisons until that time. And would the board? Fine. All right. Okay. Fine. Very good then. Um, so if we could postpone that, Kim, to the next one. I appreciate it. Next, um, I'm waiting for town council to show, but he hasn't yet. Town council will not be joining us, so I get to have the privilege of walking you through this. All right, so before we get to the town administrator's report, I'll tell you what we'll do. I'm going to turn this over to uh, Mr. Norton. We're going to go back to agenda item number three, which is a vote designation of unique property on uh, 44 Jericho Road. Thank you. Tricia. Um, as you know, the town meeting voted to support the town's acquisition of Pier 44 last week. Um, when the board sells or buys property, um, it needs to follow the procurement laws under Chapter 30B. The particular section is Section 16 of the statute. It um, requires a process to go about purchasing land and even disposing of land with certain exceptions. What the board's being asked to do tonight uh, upon the recommendation of the Town Council in accordance with the statute is to designate the Pier 44 parcel as a unique piece of property and therefore um, it would be exempt from the regular procurement processes. This is a standard procedure for um, pieces of land of this nature. It's necessitated by really two things. It is indeed a unique piece of property being it's on the harbor and um, helps complete a number of other um, plans, things in the harbor for the town. The second thing is um, the settle agreement that the board signed that not only includes the acquisition of Pier 44, but as you recall, um, also includes resolving the pending litigation and some other matters with DeCrista. That also contributes to the fact that this is a unique acquisition. So what the board needs to do with the motion provided by town council is to uh, designate here, 44, um, 44 Jericho Road is a unique property. We have to publish that in the central register, and um, then the board, can, the town, can go forward with all the other things related to the closing. Thank you. So, so the motion is the first paragraph. It's one of the. It's the whole thing there, Sean. One, two, and three. You have to read right. the whole thing. Right. Comments, comments, the motion. I'll make the motion. I guess. Um, So I move that the Board of Selectmen waive the advertising requirement under Massachusetts General Law Chapter 30B, Section 16 for the acquisition of the so-called Pier 44 property located at 44 Jericho Road, Situate, Massachusetts, from uh, DeCrisda LLC because, number one, advertising will not benefit the town's interest due to the unique qualities or location of the Pier 44 property. Number two, the Pier 44 property is unique in that it is the subject matter of pending lawsuits between and among to Crisda LLC, the Town of Situate, Massachusetts, the Situate Zoning Board of Appeals, John Danahy and Robert Reynolds individually, and as trustee of the New Marine, uh, New Marina Real Estate Trust, which arise from to Crisda's LLC application for permits and approvals to develop said property. The acquisition of the Pier 44 property is a necessary component of the settlement of all claims between and among the parties in these lawsuits. And number three, in addition, the Pier 44 property has a unique location and qualities because it is, because it is waterfront property located adjacent to Situate Harbor. The waterfront location of the Pier 44 property will be of significant benefit to the town of Situate, its inhabitants, and the general public. The area of Situate Harbor is currently developed and future opportunities to acquire land in the vicinity of Citrate Harbor are rare and unlikely. Second. Motion been made and seconded. Discussion from the floor. Norman. Just to uh, ask the question, does this in, in any way restrict further uses for the property? I don't think so, but I'll ask the town administrator. No. no. And does it restrict in any way the ability for the town, if they so desire sometime in the future, to sell the property? I don't No, not 
Not, not this at all, but it will always have those other restrictions. We talked about a town meeting in terms of it has to be public view, access, and recreational, educational. But this, this doesn't. No, no, not relative to this at all. Thank you. Uh, motion been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. All right, moving on. Um, item number 14, Town Administrator's Report. Um, we have in, the, in your packet the financial trend monitoring report through April 30th of this year. Um, as usual, I've noted the highlights as far as with our financial status is through June 30th. Um, not a lot of surprises and some stuff that we've been talking about for the last few um, months and tracking all year, police and fire overtime, which is being supplemented by FY10 salaries for uh, funded but unfilled positions. That'll create a challenge in FY11 that if we have any extra money for the special town meeting in the fall, we'll need to address this in fire. Um, and I've noted that in my comments there. Um, Major expenditures in all other categories are down significantly on the um, expenditure side. I met with Mary Gallagher, the town accountant, today to see what account shortfalls we projected for June 30th. I'm very pleased to tell the board that um, we're in excellent condition. Um, it's my understanding that the $90,000 reserve funds have always been spent to zero in prior years. Uh, as of this date, we have not suspended any money from the reserve fund, and right now, um, looking somewhere between 25 and 50,000 at best that um, we may or may not even need from the reserve fund. That coupled with the fact that you also do not have a snow and ice deficit for the first time in many years um, helps us. We can do interdepartmental transfers at the end of the year, so. Um, and I'll be coming to you with that uh, relatively shortly or right in July. Um, but overall, I think given that FY10 budgets were reduced from 09, um, the department has to be, to be particularly commended for that. On the receipt side, again, um, not much new here, particularly with um, the financial forecasting reports that we've been doing throughout the year and looking at the receipts. Our motor vehicle receipts continue to be um, about under 5%. Um, and overall, from FY09, which is really the most telling number, our receipts are down about 19%. Um, and on a good note, due to Mr. Bangert and the DPW staff's management of the trash station and the increase in those fees, I think he's done a really good job managing that this year. And um, we're um, probably going to end in the black a little bit for that this year. Happy to answer any questions. I, I, I had one, and uh, well, I had a few, but I, the um, when I was looking at the police overtime, I saw that obviously one of the highest uh, overtime was in the month of July, and I think typically that's due to the Fourth of July and what goes on at the beaches. But what I found kind of strange was the second largest um, increase or the deficit, shall we say, was was in the month of January, and uh, um, I was kind of curious why. Why there was such a, a huge decrease, you know. January is an accrual um, month, so we front load vacation and we also pay off some earnings time. So okay. um, the contract specifies January and July 1 for certain payments, so um, that could be attributed to it. Uh, but, uh, Joe, did you? No. Tony? Just a. Uh, Reiterate one thing that Trisha just said snow and ice is below budget, which is a rarity, and that's typically what that reserve fund goes to. So that's a great job by that department in doing that. Um, the only other thing that stuck out to me is the unemployment. In, in April, I know that uh, I don't think that number's plummeted to that amount. We haven't gotten the April yeah. bill yet. Um, so that one may be. They changed their software, and we're having tremendous difficulty getting the bill. We should get it by May 15th. We still have it. Mary and I looked at that. I project another 48000 through June 30th to be expended. It will still give us a little bit of a surplus, but if we average, the average bill um, has been about 25000 in March. It was um, 16000 so if I project that out for three months, um, we should be somewhere around there. Right. Um, so that will be under 
be close to budget as well. Good. But, um, yeah. Great. Good job, Sean. Did oh, you? oh, all right. Okay. Patricia, um, I was going to say, anything else that you want to report on? Go right yeah, ahead. Um, again, on employee health insurance, um, there's been quite a lot of administrative work uh, meeting with the unions in lieu of the county's vote to increase the health insurance. Uh, which we had to increase our budget right before town meeting to the tune of about $297,000. Because all of our union contracts on the town side have expired, we have to negotiate that increase with them. We're in the process of hiring a third party administrator to implement a reimbursement program to employees because when they go to the doctor, they're actually going to have to pay that increase. That's just the way you know the health administration system works. Um, so there will be a cost to engage that third party administrator. It will be in the health insurance budget because we increased it. But um, I also, in, in my report to you, want to clarify um, some things that have been in the newspaper relative to why the town hasn't migrated to GIC, why, we, you know, when we can save um, over, I think the figure was half a million dollars, somewhere between four and five hundred thousand dollars. And as I know here in my report, we uh, recently engaged Cook and Company. <coughs> to um, redo the analysis that they had done on the GIC four years ago when the municipalities were first allowed to join the GIC. That analysis showed that um, there would be some cost savings to the town. However, as the board's probably aware, but the general public might not be, um, that has to be agreed to by every union in the town, both the town and school, of which we have 11. Um, and there also needs to be, um, there's weighted votes then um, based on the agreements for plan design and any future changes. Um, one of the things that I think is important to know is most of the communities, and there's a handful that have gone to GIC, they've had health employer-employee contribution rates of the order of 90% of employer contribution or 75%. So when negotiating a change to GIC, there's considerable savings to that community, even though they're costing something in terms of a negotiation to get the employees to agree to that. Here in situ, we have a different situation because we have much parity between the employer and the employer contribution rate. It's 53 to 47% on average. So the savings going to a GIC are much less. And, um, and, and I think that the, it's a very complex issue. But what I want to assure the board is that we're looking at health insurance all the time. It's a $5 million budget item. Um, I'm in close communication with the superintendent about this. And um, if there's opportunities for us to be more efficient or more streamlined, we will. Um, but again, it's in the context of the collective bargaining environment. And um, just wanted to share a little bit with that for you. Tony? Just, I want to make sure that I understand this right so that anyone that's watching does. So. When we read these things that say that there could have been a half a million dollar savings if the Board of Selectmen had done something differently, that in fact is false. That the only way that we could have gone to the GIC is if the unions had agreed to, to incorporate that as their new health plan. Right. And, and then we project out what the attendance savings would be. Now there's savings in that. I right. mean, I don't want people to say if we weren't on GIC there would be some changes. But as I note in my report, GIC has also gone up about 14% in their rates this year. So what we need to do is compare what the most recent rate increase is for GIC and those numbers and our actual experience opposed to what it was four years ago when it first became available to municipalities. And also the reality of bargaining to agreement with 11 employee unions to go to migrate to GIC. It's not impossible, and again, that's something that we'll be in discussion with. But, um, right. but it's it's nothing right. It. It's nothing that the board could have mandated, and we could have we it's missed savings. Overnight. All we could have done is gone to the board. More than likely, the co-pays in the GIC are higher than what they're paying now, so the the unions may have balked at at doing that, um, and at which point it may have cost us more on the negotiation side of a contract. That's absolutely correct. The GIC uh, co-pays are considerably higher. Our co-pay right now is five dollars. Right. So ten dollars for employees, and that's part of the difficulty of trying to negotiate. The county increased the co-pays. We still have to negotiate it with the town side unions. Then I, can I just jump in? The final thing that you said is very important as well. It's not going to save us as much because we're at a more level. Right. It does save the employee as well. They'll pay more out of pocket to go to the doctor or right. to have specialized care. 
but at the back end they would save in the premium rate, for instance. But it's not going to save the town because we're at a 50, whatever you just no, said, 54, yeah. uh, you know. It would. A little over 200,000, we would say. At the last? Yes. You know, we don't know what it is now. You said the rates went no, up. No, it's a, a little o after the new util after right. I looked at. It's about two hundred thousand if we bargain to agreement with. So the unions would have to agree and the union right. to they take. Would have to join it. And right. They would have to say agree, savings. and they would say, okay, we'll our copays will go up to twenty dollars from the five dollars that they are now. Right. But the premium will go down, and their weekly deduction would go down. But they have not agreed to do that. So it's not. It's again, just want to reiterate, it's not something that this board or previous boards could have mandated to save the town money, which is kind of what has been which is thrown a big, out there. A very significant distinction that you raise. Right. You know, so people understand that. Um, yes, Mr. Paley. Uh, what is the time frame to begin bargaining? I've been bargaining with the union since I walked in before, <laughs> Norm. We've been all negotiating. Our, our contracts, yeah. all, the five town contracts expired June 30th of 2009. They're all expired right now. The schools are all in their second year, I believe, of a three year contract. And they have six units. So ongoing. Ongoing. Um, and again, um, uh, next item is the open meeting law training for boards and committees. Uh, we have a, I think I've talked a little bit about the board, about the new changes in the open meeting law. Uh, Bernice Brown, the town clerk, and I have been working very closely. We've talked about this. We've talked about it at the last three department head meetings um, where I distributed a bunch of material relative to that. But because support staff are often the individuals that do minutes and agendas and keep records, we're having an informational session for them June 1st at 9.30 in this room. Those notices went out today. And on June 15th at GAR Hall, there'll be another one for members of all boards and committees. Um, there's a lot of changes in the open meeting law that folks, we have a duty to inform, you know, your appointees and other elected officials. So I wanna make sure we just get the information out there to folks. How close are we uh, to completing that? I know that it's, uh, my impression was that everybody ha who's affiliated in some way, shape, or form with the town has to complete the exam, the, the test. Well, that's the, the ethics thing, John. Uh, yeah. This is the oh, this one, is the open two meeting punch. Aspect. This is gotcha, the, new the other changes one. Yep. in the July yep. one. So, okay. um, actually, the town's in good shape for some of it because the charter required us to do things like publish and post agendas when we post meetings. Most towns just post a, post a meeting notice. So. This is going to be a change for some communities just to start doing agenda postings. We're, and we've always done it, so we're ahead of the curve. And the last thing, and I, I know some of you mentioned this to me, but I really want to give a public acknowledgement to the organizers of the Ship Shape Day and Donna Bangert and those folks. It was tremendously successful. Um, it helps the town out tremendously. It, um, and I just, I just wanted to take an opportunity to commend those folks for what was really an excellent uh, event and a good showing of community spirit. Great. Thank you, Tricia. Um, all right. If we move on to other business, look around here. Anybody with other I business? Don't have anything. Nothing. Nothing. Uh, Mr. Vignani. <laughs> I'll be. I'll be quick. Um, First, I want to thank everyone for going out to the special town meeting. Um, the attendance was was very good. It exceeded the annual town meeting, and um, in terms of the two articles that were up for discussion, it was it was like a 90 percent to 10 percent um, vote on that. So um, it was very decisive. So thank you all for coming out. Um, I want to mention that Situate Little League is having a fundraiser um, June 11th at the uh, Barker Tavern. Anyone that's interested in going, Louis. Tiant is going to be there to sign stuff. It goes to uh, the maintenance of the fields and um, buying equipment for the kids. So, um, and there's also a fundraiser for Red Sox tickets. There's two games, one in June 25th and one July something. Go to situatelittleleague.org and you can see the dates there for $40 um, for the tickets that go to, again, uh, Situate Little League. Um, Third, the parade. There is a parade this sat, uh, this Monday on Memorial Day. What time does that start? I think 10 o'clock is what it normally starts. Steps off from Town Hall at 10.30. 10.30. Okay. You meet at 10 o'clock. So 
meet at 10 o'clock, it starts at 10.30 and goes up to the Common from Town Hall? Yep. Yes. yes. Um, and the last thing that I want to mention that I, I know we all have been getting a ton of emails on the, on the committee that's going to be formed for this Pier 44, um, just to, I know we're, we're trying to get the process down now, but um, I just want to give everyone confidence that we're going to move on this quickly. We know that there's a, a time period where that money can be spent and um, the committee will be formed relatively quickly and they will do their job quickly and we'll move on it. So for anyone who has fears that this October date is going to come and go before we move on this, um, please know that it's on the front of our plate and we are going to um, pay close attention to that. Thank you. Um, I only have one gentleman, and, and that is I received um, a, a, a request from the Situate Art Association. Um, the uh, Janet Carnacio um, had asked if the board would um, send a letter um, of endorsement, if you will, for, um, for them at the Ellis Estate to be able to be placed on the National Trust for Historic Places. Uh, I know we've discussed this in the past and trying to encourage them, and so if, if with your permission, so to speak, I was going to send a letter to basically a letter of support from the Board of Selectmen to do that. And well, that's a town. Tricia, do you have any feelings on that? Is that gonna, I'm not necessarily against it, but well, that's a town-owned building, right? Do we have any input? I mean, do we? <coughs> I, I saw the letter. I received okay. a copy as well, and I, there's no problem. There okay. You know. okay. Who's going to pay for... They got CPC. They did. They okay. 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 So it's already been appropriated. Yeah. All right. That's it. That's all I have, gentlemen. So. Okay. Moving on. Um, correspondence. And seeing one, the clerk could read the correspondence. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is um, a letter from Donna Bangert, the uh, Situ Beautification Commission, to Chris Kennedy at Kennedy uh, Country Gardens. Um, on behalf of Citrus Beautification Commission, thank you for donating a tree to the residents of the town in observations of Arbor Day. Uh, the, tree you, the tree you selected, a magnolia butterflies, will produce fragrant yellow flowers in early spring before its leaves appear. Their petals move in the breeze, given the appearance of the fluttering butterfly perched among the branches. It will grow to be 10 or 15 feet in 10 years and ultimately reach 30 feet tall. Um, this appealing specimen is planted in front of Town Hall where it blooms and fragrance can be enjoyed by people doing business with the town and by all who pass on First Parish Road and Chief Justice Cushing Highway. It is highly desirable addition to the diversity of the trees in situate, supporting our um, designation as a tree city USA. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. Signed, Donna Banger. Just one quick thing. I noticed, uh, Trish, it looks like they cut some trees down in front of the town hall. You finally can see, read the sign, town hall. That looks nice. So. Number of improvements to the building, the landscape plan, maybe some paint. The trees that were removed were diseased, and they were diseased. And um, I wish they had been cut down a year ago when I was trying to find town hall for my interview. I drove by about six times. <laughs> and I just thought it was a school. We're glad you found it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, all right, next is uh, 17. It's the minutes. Move the minutes of May 17th, 2010. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, moving on to item number 18, which happens to be labor negotiations, pending litigation, consideration, purchase, exchange, lease, value of real property. In other words, folks, we're going to be going into executive session. If, yes. 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 Good night, folks. Thank you.